So today we are talking about solving right triangles and by solving right triangles we're really looking at angles and how we can solve for different angles. We've got something new that we're going to do today. Have we ever done exploring in this class? Yeah. We have done exploring? No. You explored? I was, no. I, I, oh, I can't stay up here while I record so I they can hear me. Yeah. Can hear me. We definitely have not. We have not? Okay. Well, that will be new for today. We're going to explore a little bit. We've got some examples, practice problem, all kinds of stuff. So let's explore for a second. Let's say you have a problem like this. 8 times x equals 24. What are we going to do to solve for x? We're going to divide by 8. So we have x over here that has been multiplied by 8, and we do what to get x by itself? We divide, but like dividing is the what of multiplication? It's the opposite, or some might say the inverse. Very good. What if we have... This. How are we going to get x by itself? Subtract 6. We are doing the what of addition. We are doing the inverse, or we are doing the opposite. Very good. What else do we do the inverse in? Is there anything? I'm trying to think. Hmm. Well, yeah, we could go with a division problem and then a subtraction problem and do the inverse. But we're familiar with this idea of inverses with multiplication and division, addition, and subtraction. Now, when it comes to sine, cosine, and tangent, those also have an inverse. All right? And they're almost, it's, well, it's a really easy inverse. The inverse of tan is just inverse tan. The inverse of sine is inverse sine. The inverse of cosine is, you guessed it, inverse cosine. The way that we write that, the inverse, let's say, of tangent, the way that we would write that would be tan inverse of whatever is there, okay? So in this situation, if we are trying to solve for A, we're trying to find what the value of A is, we are going to, technically, we're going to take the tan inverse of both sides. Whoa, you're jumping the gun. You're jumping the gun here. Oh, okay. Technically, and we, and we don't write this step out. I'm just showing you for this one example. We take the tan inverse of both sides. See you later. And A equals the tan inverse of 0.75. Which, if you look at your calculator, you're thinking, how the heck do I find the tan inverse of 0.75? Well, you can turn your calculator on, hit second tangent, and you should see tan to the negative 1. And you can type in 0.75, and it will give you an answer. If you hit second tangent. Make sure we're in degree mode. Like Jack said, I, he did that whole page wrong because he was in the in the wrong mode. We don't want that to happen. Right, Jack? Oops. Now, for the next one. Sine inverse, well, we should say B equals the sine inverse of 0.87. Did anyone find what that was? Rounded to what I say, the tenth? Nearest tenth? Sixty point five. All right. C equals the cosine inverse of point one five. Eighty one point four. So we are, we are taking the opposite. We're solving for our letter here. We'll talk about what that actually like means in a second. Um, and we take the opposite by using the inverse, inverse button on our calculator. We hit second sine. That would give us inverse sine. Second cosine would give us inverse cosine, and so on. 
does anyone have questions on where those buttons are or how we solve for those? Good? Kylie, you doing okay? All right. Nick, you get those? Perfect. So when we say when we say that, you know, inverse sine of eighty of 0.87 um, is 60.5, and we find this B value, like what is that? If we think about a triangle, what is that? Is that a side length? Like what's what's what is 60.5? What did we just find? Yeah, we just found an angle. We just found that in whatever triangle we have, we're going from the perspective of B, right? Oh, I didn't draw a good triangle. Sorry. I need to draw a right triangle. We're going from the perspective of B, right? We don't know what this angle is, but we know the sign, so the opposite over hypotenuse is 0.87 and we use the inverse sine function to say hey angle B is 60.5 degrees. Isn't that insane? We used to have to find sides of triangle or angles of triangles by saying alright this is 90 then they had to give us this one and then we'd have to do 180 minus 90 minus 30 and we could find that this is 60. Now we don't even need to know what all the angles are. We we just need to know it's a right triangle. We need to know a couple of the sides and we can figure out every angle in our triangle. Pretty crazy, huh? Now you can now you are literally limitless with triangles. You can do everything. Yes, sorry. So we now can do both. So, so far we have only been figuring out side lengths, right? They have given us, what the heck, like here, they have given us the angle and we have been finding side lengths. Now what they'll, they'll be able to do, they'll be able to say, hey, this is 20, this is 17.8, what is this? And an X would be right here and we'll be able to solve for an angle. Anytime we use angle or we're looking for an angle, and this is really important, probably something you want to write down on your note packet. I think it's on there somewhere. Anytime we are looking for an angle, we will use inverse tan, inverse sine, inverse cosine. We always use inverses to find angle measures. I hope you get that. We are always using inverses to find angle measures. Right, because in our setup, it makes sense. Because in our setup, the angle measure is inside of sine, cosine, or tangent. So if we are looking for the angle measure, if our variable is the angle measure, we're always going to have to use the inverse to bring sine, cosine, or tangent to the other side. So today, we'll be using a lot of the inverses. Go ahead, take a minute on your own. Calculator, button push. I would like to see one, two, these three problems taken care of before getting the worksheet today. If you have questions, ask me. saying the tangent of some variable, something we don't know, is 0.43. Okay. We need to bring tangent, in a sense, bring tangent to the other side so we can solve for g. That's why, and maybe I didn't get the point across very well with our exploring, but that's why we talked about those inverses when we were exploring, because we're, we're kind of 
getting K by itself or whatever. Okay. So I'll Today's a worksheet. We'll, we'll move past this slide in a second. We'll go 10 more seconds here. Come on, you guys are doing so good. Three more slides, that's it. Uh, she is not here today. Thank you. Yep. First, I had no idea who she said. I was like, oh, huh. Kaylee. All right. Now we're going to look at two examples. Well, we have three total examples, but two examples and a story problem. I don't know who's in our story problem today. We're going to have to figure that out when we get there. But. You'll see mainly two different types of problems here. Solve the right triangle. Now, when it says solve the right triangle, that means find each side length. Also find each angle measure. So there are three things that we need to find here. And that's what it means when it says solve the right triangle. You'll see that on your homework. Round decimal uh, answers to the nearest tenth. So first, let's solve for C. How are we going to find C? We talked about a lot of different strategies and different things with triangles. What are we going to do to find C? Oh, I see. C. Someone said it. Side C. Lowercase C. Sorry. Yeah, Pythagorean theorem. It's the hypotenuse. C squared equals 3 squared plus 2 squared. So 9 plus 4 would give us 13. Square root of 13. In this case, it wants us to round to the nearest tenth. So someone punch that in your calculator. Perfect. 3.6. Good. Now let's find the measure of angle B. So we are looking for the measure of angle B. Now we could use this 3.6 when we are setting up our Ratio, we haven't decided yet if we're going to use sine, cosine, or tangent. And we could use 3.6. I probably would lean towards using the given because if somehow you messed up and 3.6 is wrong, then you're going to get this one wrong as well. You guys know what I mean? Sometimes you don't have a choice, but when you have the choice, use the given. So which one of our ratios, sine, cosine, or tangent, only uses the legs? Tangent does. And what is that ratio? That's our TOA. TOA. So that would be opposite 2 over 3. Now, here's our setup. Just like we did in the last problem, we need to solve for B. So we take the inverse tan. Again, we're solving for the angle. We always use inverse tan, or the inverse function, to solve. So we can just punch that right in our calculator. Second tan, 2 divided by 3, close your parentheses, and what did you get? 33.7. Any questions on that one? Now, we also need to find angle A. What could we do to find angle A? So, two options. Both of you are correct. Hannah said we could just subtract. We, we know two out of the three, right? So we have 180 minus 90 minus 33, 7. <laughs> All right, what's the answer then? Because I can't do that in my head. Yeah, for some little kid math, huh? 
Now, Alton said we could do just like what we did on the last one, right? We have angle A, the opposite is 3, the adjacent is 2, and we would be using tangent. Whoops, A equals the tan inverse of 3 over 2, which hopefully is 56.3, otherwise we really messed up. Is it? Is it? Is it? Cole's nodding. Are you nodding just so that we can keep moving, or is it actually? It is? Yes? Sweet. No? 56.3. Right? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> what? No, you only need the warm-up and the practice. This is just an example. What questions? How are we feeling about this? Is this pretty easy for what we've talked about so far? Or a little bit tricky? Not too bad? You're not sure when to use them? No, I know how to do all the now. I don't even know what to do. So like we talked about the first day, like, whoops. So, like sign, what sign means is the ratio of the opposite over hypotenuse. Whatever that ratio is, that's what sign means. Cosine means the ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, we looked at those special right triangles, right? Like a 45, 45, 90. And the cool thing about those is that no matter what size our triangle is, these ratios are always the same. We looked at like the square root of 2 over 2 or 1 half or different things like that. Um, so that's, what's, that's why we looked at these special right triangles. But with any other type of triangle that just has a right angle, but we don't know what the other angles are, like they could be anything, then sine would be the ratio of the opposite over hypotenuse and so on with cosine and tangent. I don't know if that helps a little bit. Or bring some of it together? No? Well, you also were looking at Will's iPad screen while I was talking, so that probably isn't going to help. But, if we look at this one, example three, here's another type of problem you'll see. Solve the right triangle. So we need to find angle G. We also need to find H and G. So last time we had two missing angles, right? This time we have two missing sides. Now, let's just find angle G because we can do that really quickly. How are we going to find the measure of angle G? We have two of the angles. We have 90, 25. Yeah, we're just subtracting. So 180 minus 90 minus 25 gives us 65 degrees. Now, why don't we go to find, let's find H first, side H. We have to go, well, we don't have to. We could go from the perspective of angle G. But just in case somehow we did our subtraction wrong or punched the wrong button in the calculator or anything like that, I still am going to want to stick with the given. So let's go from the perspective of 25. Now we're looking for angle H, which is the opposite. And we have the hypotenuse. Now opposite over hypotenuse, that would be sine. This looks like our setup from yesterday, right? And the day before. H equals 13 times the sine of 25. And what would that give me rounded to the nearest tenth? 5.5. Now we are finding G. Again, going from the perspective of the 25 degree angle, we are looking for the adjacent leg, and we were given the hypotenuse 
Adjacent over hypotenuse gives us cosine. It matches the ratio for cosine. G times 1 is just G. 13 times the cosine of 25 would give us somebody? 11.8. So this looks more like what we did yesterday, right? Um, but the point is they can say solve the right triangle and they will either give us one angle and two sides or give us two angles and one side. And either way, we can find all angles, all sides of whatever triangle they give us. Like I said, we are owning triangles today. Well, right triangles at least. We will completely own triangles of all shapes next week. What questions do you guys have? I have one more example. Okay. Is anybody involved in theater? Anybody? Chaz is? Okay, Chaz, what is a raked stage then? What does that term mean? I don't know what that means. Rake it? Oh, like yard work? Like with a rake? Oh, if it gets dirty from like confetti or something like that. Oh, okay, okay. So, our school, new school, we're building a raked stage. So, confetti is built in. The stage will be 30 feet long from front to back. Stage front, stage back, 30 feet. Where are we going? From front to back, oh, with a total rise of 2 feet. I have a feeling a raked stage doesn't have anything to do with rakes. Uh, you want the rake elevation, angle of elevation, to be 5 degrees or less for safety. Is the rake stage within your desired range? So is this a safe raked stage? Well, we would have to solve for x to see if it's greater than or less than 5 degrees. So we have angle x. We know that's going to be our angle. Equals. We are given the hypotenuse, or the hypotenuse, yep. We are also given the opposite side. So that would mean we would be using sine, right? That is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine inverse, 2 over 30. What does that give us? What does that give us? Oh, I got my calculator right here. Second, sine 2 divided by 30, 3.8. So is, Chaz, is our stage safe? Yeah, yeah it is, because it's less than, has less than a 5 degree angle of elevation. Sweet. Now, Chaz, next time you're on stage, you can double check with your compass and tape measure that it's safe and built to regulation. See, we've applied this to Cole's life. We've applied this to Alton's and Chaz's all in one week. Pretty nuts, huh? Pretty insane. All right. Here's the last practice problem. So that means I need to see one, two, three. Is this the fourth? Oh, if we didn't finish the first ones? Well, good thing I've got two projectors. Good thing I've got two projectors. There we go. Also, I thought I did post the slides, but are they not on there? Okay. No, freeze. There we go.